6.47, good morning. Let's have a look at the newspapers for you today. The Sunday Times has uh, the Princess of Wales uh, writing every word of her video message herself without any input from her advisers. And it felt like that, actually. Yeah, it did, actually. Very personal. The Mail on Sunday leads with uh, Princess Catherine as well, revealing that she feels extremely moved by the overwhelming love and sympathy she's received following that announcement. Sunday Express has the Princess of Wales astounding those close to her with the courage and dignity she displayed. The Sun on Sunday leads with Princess Catherine again, having a heart-to-heart -heart with the King at Windsor Castle hours before she announced her cancer diagnosis. It'll bring the two even closer together, I mm -hmm. should think, won't mm -hmm. it? Uh, and the only paper not leading with the Princess of Wales is The Observer which has French police funded by the UK government endangering the lives of vulnerable migrants by using deadly tactics to intercept small boats in the Channel. Well, joining us to go through what's making the news is Deputy Editor at Spiked, Fraser Myers, and Editor-at-Large at Times Mon Money Mentor, jo Georgie Frost. Lovely to see you both. Good morning. And, of course, it is Catherine again. Yes. Um, uh, and we, we look, Fraser, at the Sunday Times front page. This is the fact that um, we now hear that she wrote every word of what she said. Yeah, so this is coming from uh, Kate's uh, personal friends. I think what's interesting, not just that she wrote every word, but that she felt it was important to do a video message. Mm. Um, she said she thought that uh, a written message would be too jarring, just putting out, you know, a, a statement that might not... Um, it doesn't resonate do, the same ...wouldn't way. resonate in the same way. Mm. And I think also, you know, the Palace really did need to draw a line under this uh, yeah. issue, given the intense weeks and months of, of speculation about her health and about um, various other aspects of her, her life, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, this uh, and, and it does, you know, it does come across as very personal. It does come across, um, you know, she is someone known for her having great dignity and poise, and you can see that very well in, the, in this video. Yeah, yeah. and Georgie, in the, the Sunday Express's front page, they go for the fact that she has been so touched by our reaction. Yes, and I can imagine so. I just back to the story that she chose to do this herself. I think is really interesting because it is the palace press office or whoever's her advisors, whoever, has been very heavily criti criticised over the last few months for the way that it feels like Kate has almost had to come out and say something that's deeply personal. My, mom, my mother got cancer when I was in, the te in my teens and I will never forget that moment of seeing her face mm -hmm. and seeing that fear and fear in myself and understanding that. So it's an incredibly difficult time for a young woman, a young mother of three young children, to go through this and then to go through this so publicly. Mm. So, you know, uh, I, I wish her best, uh, the, all the best. What else can we say? It's a, 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 a slight difference. I'm not trying to diminish what she's going through in any way, shape or form. But by doing this video, I mean, you just know that the support of the nation is going to be behind you. Absolutely. And, look, I mean, I don't know if she felt she had to do this to stop all of the salacious gossip online and all that sort of thing. And if she did feel that way, then I, I think that's awful yeah. that she felt yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. But I would also feel this kind of... Everybody now turning on other people who are speculating the media are terrible. I'd suggest a lot of what we've seen over the last few months really isn't coming from our media. It's coming from outside. Every time I go abroad and I speak to colleagues abroad, they always say to me, oh, you heard the latest. And I'm like, no, we don't know anything. No, but the we problem are is it's, quite... it's, it's, it's not our... It's, some of it is papers and things. A lot of it's social media. Yeah. Exactly, which comes social from... Media. A lot of... Exactly, it's social media. And so it's not, not a lot of what we do. I think the British media in this regard normally quite, res quite respectful yeah. of that. Yeah. I, th I think it's, really, it's unfortunate that nowadays we, we've sort of lost the value of privacy, you know, because we have laws against privacy, but that doesn't seem to have done anything in this, um, in this instance. We seem to think that if people aren't telling us everything, um, you know, they're, 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 they're hiding, hiding something. something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, rather than saying there are healthy yeah. reasons why someone wouldn't want to reveal very, very intimate details about their illnesses, we think there must be something sinister, uh, something secretive. And, uh, you know, so I think maybe we should use this as an opportunity to rediscover the value of privacy, having a private life, letting people have their own private space. Yes, I don't know, the whole thing just, just drives you around. I was just driven by one... I don't know what paper it was in. Oh, here we go. And one particular columnist...
I'm not going to name, uh, but very left-wing and known for it. And he's a, he's apologised mm. on Twitter, but said, as someone who speculated on this, without considering it could be a serious health condition, I'm very ashamed about what he posted. But without considering it could be a serious health condition, we were told it was a serious. Yeah, exactly. Health this is exactly right. I don't I don't understand this. I mean. Major said, abdominal surgery. And she needs a time. Health she needs time to rest. We yeah. have absolutely no right, absolutely no right to know her medical yeah. issues. No. She, they've absolutely been clear about this. Where I think sort of the, cr the cracks have been allowed to come in is a little bit of information here, mm. a little bit of information there. Sort of, you know, if you're going to be sticking to the Queen's attitude of never complain, never explain, then you should really stick to that. Mm. So I think that allowed some creeps to come in, but yeah. Yeah. wish her well. And it's worth, worth stressing that, we, you know, as, as you said, we knew this was a serious illness and we knew that she wouldn't be back um, for, quite, it, a long for time. quite a long time yeah. until after Easter. It's not Easter yet. I don't know what people thought why there had needed to be a gap to fill. It was... It was the thing is, I suppose, being nasty. she is so high profile. She's, mm. she's one, of the, one of the most popular, if not the most popular, member of the royal family at the moment. Um, and then the king as well being ill with yeah. the same thing. You were looking at the um, Sun on Sunday oh, front I page, which is about the fact that they had a very emotional lunch, a heart to heart yes. at Windsor Castle before she did this. So this was on Thursday. She actually recorded the announcement on, on Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, then she met the king for um, a lunch on Thursday and then we had the announcement on, on, on Friday. Um, I, there's also some really interesting stories coming out from the, the other papers suggesting that, you know, they were in hospital at the same time and so Charles would come in his uh, nighty and uh, nighty. Visit in his, in his, his uh, dressing you know, gown. Uh, hospital dressing gown yeah. mm. and visit her at um, he toddled uh, down the corridor. Toddled, toddled down the corridor. For some well. reason, they used the word toddle. Mm. Yeah. I tell you what, it, it won't have been a hospital dressing gown. <laughs> no. It would have been one brought in, I'll exactly. tell you that. Yeah, yes. But I'll tell you what is nice is we, we get all this in a lot... It's not all been driven by the Harry and Meghan thing, but that's exacerbated. This idea that it's a very dysfunctional family and it's all very odd and all this stuff. This is... This just promotes the fact that... I mean, they clearly have a very good, close, yeah. loving relationship. Mm. Which, uh, which is fantastic. It is. I mean, united in, in their health issues, but they've always had a very close bond. Yeah. And, and, and the stories like this are sort of where we'd like to go, I think, with now, rather than all this, yeah. as I said, salacious gossip that we don't want to talk about. You know, let's just focus on mm. Kate having some time and... and Recovering and well, toddling down they're corridors, two, for they're example. two incredibly important people who need to heal. Mm. Um, and you can't speed up healing. No. It takes its time, doesn't it? Definitely. And they're probably going and through all sorts of other medicines and treatments mm. and everything as well. Yeah. And focusing on the children, I would also say, mm. is this time of, you know, this is where the privacy really needs to come in, is, you know, mm. this is three children that are processing something they can not possibly understand. And I think hopefully that opens the debate for how we do talk to children and support children who are going through this sort of thing Posit as well. But the positive thing with this is that the, the children are still very young, so they won't understand all the implications no. of this, will they? They'll just know mummy's not They can be well. shielded from a lot yeah. of it, I think. Yeah. Which is... Which I think is a very good thing. Keep keep them out of the way. Um, lovely Fraser, Georgie, thank you very much indeed. We'll see you a little bit later on. Um, in the meantime, should we see just how cold and miserable it is? Well, actually, it was it, it was, was quite clear yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. What's it going to be like today? Here's the weather.